I started this channel about a year ago and I wanted to share my journey of understanding nature of reality and YouTube. Today, after about a year going through different books, philosophical, scientific ideas, videos, I believe there is a God. And in this video, I'm just going to share the reason that is based on Godel incompleteness theorem. According to Godel, there is a truth that we know it's truth. There's something that we know it's true and that can give rise to the laws and those laws cannot explain that truth, but we know it's true. For example, from two points on a flat surface, there's only a single line that can pass uh, through two points. And why is it true? We just, that's what we think it's true. From two points, there's going to be a single line, not multiple lines. Assuming this, so accepting this as an axiom, we can build rest of the Euclidean geometry. This is called Godel incompleteness theorem. So if this is true, that in anything, we have to have, if, if, we, if we see some laws and we experience them, and then we go back and back and back, we have to accept some initial axioms. I'd heard about Gödel's theorem. I was a bit worried by the idea that it seemed to say there were things in mathematics that you could never prove. What Gödel shows that if you have such a system, then you can construct a statement of the very kind that it's supposed to look at, a mathematical statement, and you can see by the way it's constructed and what it means that it's true, but not provable by the rules that you've been given. And it depends on your trust in the rules. Do you believe that the rules only give you truths? If you believe the rules only give you truths, then you believe this other statement is also true. I found this absolutely mind-blowing. When I saw this, it blew my, you know, blew my mind. I thought, my God, you can see that this statement is true. It's as good as any proof, because it only depends on your belief in the reliability of the proof procedure. That's all it is. It's your understanding of what the system is actually saying and what the statement that you've constructed is actually saying. So it's this quality of understanding, whatever it is, which is not governed by rules. It's not a computational procedure. So where the thought entered your mind that the idea of understanding, or we can start calling it things like intelligence or even consciousness is outside the rules. What's going on in our heads is not an algorithm. It's not following rules. It's something else. It's something that requires our conscious appreciation of what we're thinking about. Thinking is a conscious thing and understanding is a conscious activity. So I formed the view that conscious activities, whatever they are, not just that kind of thing, but playing music or, or falling in love or whatever these things might be, are not computations. There's something else going on. Now apply this to the whole space-time. If you go back in space-time, if you accept the Big Bang Theory at some point, the space-time came to exist. What was before that? I think we have two options. We either have to say something or nothing. Can we accept it's nothing? According to Godel, it has it is something that we know it's true and gives rise to all the laws but laws cannot prove it so the space time itself think of it as some laws like some computational laws that cannot prove if there was nothing but we also do not accept it because in our daily life we always seen things come out of something, not from nothing. So that means this shouldn't be a following Godel incompleteness. How about the other uh, option? It's there is something, and then from that something, space-time comes to existence. 
but ex but the space time itself doesn't prove that something but we know that something is truth well what is it that we know it's truth what is it that we know is there it's our consciousness so i would argue that something has to be of type consciousness so the if there is uh, everything blank when we close our eyes when 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 there is no sensory input we still know there is consciousness because we know consciousness is what no matter in what situation we can acknowledge it and then that consciousness gives rise to the space time but we know we didn't give rise to space time we don't have effect on stars galaxies and so just by ourselves what i'm saying is that is of type consciousness but it's a universal consciousness in episode one i quoted charles darwin who suggested that we perceive mathematical objects through an extra sense we could call it the mathematical sense of the mind and this sixth sense this mathematical sense of the mind has a remarkable property through it we perceive all mathematical objects in exactly the same way. You and I perceive the mathem mathematical objects of a straight line, as we discussed in episode one, in exactly the same way. Whereas we perceive physical objects, objects in the physical reality through our five senses slightly differently, from different angles, from different positions, and so on. Based on all this, in episode one, I suggested that our minds must be somehow connected. So what I think is consciousness is fundamental. That consciousness created space-time based on some laws. But those laws do not prove um, the existence of that consciousness. My name is Gerald Schroeder. Science has, in fact, discovered God. Well, if you take the trouble of going to the web and, and they're typing WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite, it's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Every word on that diagram comes from the NASA site. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram, and you end up at the far end with the oval. The oval sh is to indicate expansion in all directions. Of course, because it's a timeline, we can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge, it shows a beginning to the universe. Now, go back less than 50 years. If I were teaching that at Tech, I might have, you, you know, a person could lose tenure saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible, because less than 50 years ago, the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal. There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. And then we discovered, suddenly, Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the northeast of the US, discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow, 60 years ago, predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded, and the energy would get more and more dilute. And, the, and Penzias and Wilson, these Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. Now, the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Back vacuums are empty space, and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain, because humans think in a box, a box made of time, space, and matter slash energy. No human, as clever as they might be, as expansive as they might be, thinks out of that box. So when we say outside that diagram is nothing, we can use the words, but we can't conceive of nothing. It doesn't fit in the human brain. But how are we going to have this idea, is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't the three-letter word, G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryon, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature almost 40, 50 year, 40 years ago. The universe allows creation of something from nothing, 
provided you have the laws of nature, the quantum fluctuation. Tryon realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, in other words, the laws of nature. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical, they act on the physical. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. So now we have a set of forces, we call them the laws of nature, that are not physical, that are able to act on the physical, they create the physical from absolute nothing. And they predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. Put that together and it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. If you agree that before space-time, there was a, a consciousness that could have been, that could have imprinted on itself some mathematical order, then I don't find it hard to explain where did the creator come from or where did that consciousness come from. Um, think about the space-time itself within that consciousness plus more. So space-time is like a tip of the iceberg. And then the whole iceberg, the one that is under the water that we are unaware of also is within that consciousness. So in my opinion, everything is within God. Everything, including space-time, is within a base consciousness and that base consciousness has some mathematical order in it for space-time and anything outside of it that is still within God or within that universal mind. So this was the first thing that I accepted that there must be a consciousness that not only has a space-time but also it could have more more than space-time in itself, and we are within it, and it's fundamental, and um, it's aligned with analytical idealism of Bernardo Castro, uh, but again, uh, in my opinion, we are just the tip of the iceberg. This is space-time is just the tip of the iceberg, so there could be a lot more going on. Um, but the amount that we perceive with our brain and body is space-time. So that, that was the first step for me to say, I'm no longer an atheist. I used to be an atheist and now I think atheism is an underfit model to reality. The moment that I realize something coming from nothing doesn't follow Godel and completeness theorem. I said atheism is underfit. It doesn't explain this. It doesn't fit in this mathematical logical theory that Godel proved it. 